Hello, I'm Nicholas Reed. I play Jack Harper and I'm the creator of The Object Saga. And it all started with a little short film called The Object, which was based on a short story I wrote called The Day in the Life of Mr. Man. So today, I thought we'd have a little read through of this little short story, shall we? We start our story in a very dark room that appears to be very still, almost like a picture. Suddenly, a sharp, loud sound began to thump when suddenly two bright blue eyes appear from the darkness. The light switches on to let us discover that it's a man in bed. His alarm is going off. The man Pulling himself out of bed, finally hits his alarm to turn it off. He stretches up and stumbles over to the curtains covering his window and pulls them apart. A gulf of light appears from the gap in between the curtains, almost blinding for a split second. The man, squinting his eyes, gazes out of his window to see a small town looking a bit run down. The man says, like opening his mouth for the first time, home sweet home. Later that day, the man is running out of his house and slamming his door on the way out, as if he was in a hurry. As the man gets further away from his house, he gets more engulfed with people around him, all in a hurry, all wanting to get to their destination. The man pushes through the crowd of people as if it was an obstacle course, when all of a sudden, the man bumps into another person. The other person drops something but does not notice and keeps walking into the huge crowd of people. The man stops, picks up the object and attempts to give it back to the person that dropped it. But as soon as the man picked up the object, the other person that had dropped it had disappeared into the huge crowd of people. The man gazed down at the object in his hand. It looked like an old relic of some kind, of some importance. The man was now in a cafe, still gazing at the object, as if it had some spell over him, staring into the centre of the object, becoming totally irresponsive. A ring appeared from within the man's jacket. At first he did not notice it, still within the trance. He suddenly broke out of contact with this object and went into his jacket and pulled out a mobile phone. You could not hear what the other person was saying over the phone, but with the expression on the man's face, it looked like he was in trouble. Sorry, sir. I got caught up with family business. The man responded. The voice on the phone appeared to be getting louder. Yes, I will be taking the day off, the man said before putting the phone back in his pocket. A door opened to a dark room. The man had returned home. He sat on his bed and pulled out the object and continued to be fascinated by it. As he stared longingly at it, as if he was being pulled inside the mysterious object. The next day, a dark morning very much like the day before, the man does exactly as he did the day before. He gets out of bed. He turns the light on turns the alarm off and opens the curtain. But as soon as the gulf of light hits him from the outside world, this time he remembers the object. He begins to look for it, searching everywhere for it. But it was nowhere to be found. That man was almost sad. 
the object disappeared. The man continued his day the same as before, rushing out of his house and into the huge crowd of people, when suddenly he knocks into another person, and as soon as this happens, the man has a huge case of deja vu, and feels really shocked. The man glances down at the floor to see the same object. A look of despair suddenly appears across the man's face as he contemplates what in the world is happening as he begins to stare deep into the core of the mysterious object. The end. So I hope you enjoyed that little read through of the day in the life of Mr. Man. Obviously you can see the similarities between the short story and the film and obviously you can tell that the ending is slightly different because the ending we had where there's a second Andrew, obviously he didn't have a name at the time, was thought of on the day. So that, that's just a little insight into the differences between the short film and the story. It's, it's actually quite interesting really because when we film to the object. I didn't have a script for it. I used the short story as a basis and storyboarded the rest because there isn't much dialogue. We used the original short story and then storyboards just to kind of block it out. So I thought that would be interesting to see how that played out. Go back to the roots as you could say. So thank you very much for coming down memory lane with me and going back into the day of the life of Mr. Man, or should I say, Mr. Myers. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>